Hi folks from here from Now Spinning Magazine with another unboxing video and this is the Heavy Metal Kids, the album from 1974 to 1976 from Cherry Red Records. So let's have a quick look inside the box and then I shall give you a rundown what I think straight afterwards. The Heavy Metal Kids, the albums 1974 to 1976 from Cherry Red Records. And this is from um, 70s Records, which is a division of Cherry Red Records. It's a nice clamshell box, contains three CDs and a nice hefty 30 odd page booklet as well. I'll go through the booklet last of all. The CDs all replicate the original artwork with the credits on the back and the each each CD comes with um, a lot of um, uh, bonus tracks as well, which are all worthwhile. They're all great tracks in their own right, like singles and B-sides and outtakes and or chorus when they renamed the band to the kids. And then the third one produced by Mickey Most, where they went back to being known as the heavy metal kids. The booklet has been put together and written by an essay by David Ling, Dave Ling from Classic Rock Magazine and Rock Candy. A fantastic essay it is as well. You've got lots of memorabilia, lots of fantastic pictures. And uh, Gary Alton, who played the Artful Dodger in Oliver, so he got a theatrical background. He, he, he also most carried on that kind of image with the band. Absolutely fantastic front man. You've got lots of singles, album, um, you know, the photographs of the, the label, etc. Some fantastic period pictures. Um, great picture of the band there, like a bunch of street urchins, as is that one. A Japanese um, album there, and again some press press cuttings as well from the actual posters and that were used in the music press, single covers. But as I say, the essay is fantastic. The centre spread is loads of gig news from the back of the Melody Maker, Enemy and Sounds. Absolutely superb stuff and it's a wonderful essay it's the kind of thing you will dip into several times as you go off and explore down the rabbit hole and see where the different members went some great live shots there of the band the single there i remember buying she's no angel which i'll talk about later um that was on the rack label and the final album of course some more live shots on the back as well so the whole booklet is just full of of information and data on the band and then the track titles etc are on the back of the box. That's Heavy Metal Kids 1974 to 1976 three CD box set from Cherry Road Records. They should have been huge. They really should have been a massive band but they picked the wrong name. Um, in the booklet it mentions they picked the Heavy Metal Kids because I think it was a phrase used in a William Burroughs book and you've got to remember kids that in 1974 the phrase heavy metal wasn't that well known now some of you go well Buck Sabbath were the godfathers of heavy metal it wasn't really called heavy metal then um it was it was progressive rock or rock music or hard rock um heavy rock heavy rock was more common as a phrase not heavy metal there's a music magazine called um uh, what's it called music scene and they did an article on heavy metal in in, in late 74 uh, i'm gonna share that with you one day so calling themselves the heavy metal kids at the time they must have thought it was a good idea but it really worked against them because you really thought they were going to be well fancy calling yourself after a genre who's got the the gall to to call themselves the heavy metal kids you know, um, it's like as if you're trying to make out that you're the heavy metal band because you've called yourself the Heavy Metal Kids. Although it was a name, I think, originally put forward for free by Chris Blackwell at Island Records in 1969, I think, 68. And they're not a heavy metal band. Which, which for people like me, I completely bypassed them. I gave them no time at all. You have the cheek to call yourself the Heavy Metal Kids and you're not even a metal band. The fact is, this band were very much related to Silverhead with Michael DeBars. In fact, there's, there's a link between his vocal style and Gary Holton. Both guys started off life on the theatre stage. Um, you know, they're kind of like Gary Holton's Fagin 
artful dodger kind of image which he took on to stage a bit of alex harvey the top hat and the you know the drain pipe jeans and the bobber boots he was such a character and that's why they got signed by Atlantic records they were just seen as characters and the first album is a bit like silverhead uh, it's a bit like humble pie um it's a bit stonesy it's a bit mot the early mot the hoople um it it's a rock and roll album great songs there's even a bit of reggae on there there's all sorts of things for your ballads and it's a it it should have been big and they must have thought that being called the heavy metal kids was not going to go in their favor so when they did the second album in 1975 anvil chorus um they changed the name to the kids which probably wasn't that much a brilliant move either um that one is ironically the second album uh Amal chorus has a uh instrumental called um, the turk and what he smokes what he smokes and he popped the cockney accent there is a although i've just gone australian uh is probably the closest they got to being a heavy metal track it's got some great riffs some great soloing some great kind of um um, you know kind of chord changes and it's it's a heavy metal song and um and the cops are coming with more kind of punky in a way which i'll come to in a minute and um and the, and the single ain't nothing but a house party which wasn't one of their own but that should have been a hit they should have made it we've already had two strong albums and then they bump into mickey most who wants to go out on a high after being doing all that pop stuff with rap records and he signs them up they lose Danny Parnell, who I've just done a podcast with, who went on to join, after he left Heavy Metal Kids, he went to join UFO for the No Heavy Petting album. John Sinclair replaced Danny on keyboards. And again, classically trained, had lots of ideas, but I think Danny was more kind of proggy than rocky. And um, he put lots of different flavours on, on the albums. And uh, the opening track from Kitch, which is probably, this is the most polished album. It's probably the one that's, a few steps away from the original approach of being, as I said, Silverhead, Humble Pie, Mott, etc. You know, the, the overture track. It's almost like they're trying to put together musical theatre. Um, and a bit like Captain Space, really. And uh, She's No Angel is on here, which was a which was a track that I covered in my band Tantrum in the 80s. Um, great track. Wonderful songs. Um, you know, Gary Alton does his, by now, his voice is heading towards Ian Hunter, real mockney, um, in his, his approach to, to vocal styling. And this is probably where he bumped into Johnny Rotten from the Pistols. Uh, there's a track on here called Delirious, which could be off, never mind the bollocks, by the Sex Pistols. It is that close. And in fact, in the booklet, it mentions this. They were in the speakeasy, I think, or somewhere like that. And, and uh, Johnny Rotten came in with his bouncers because he needed bouncers in those days because everybody just hated him and what the Sex Pistols stood for. And um, there was a deathly silence when Johnny Rotten walked into this pub and um, Gary Alton was there next to an open fire. And Johnny Rotten came over, undid a huge gold safety pin off his own coat and put it onto Gary's lapel, patted him on the cheek and said, You've been ripped off, Alton. How does it feel? Because in a way, that kind of street urchin, um, kind of cartoon character, rock and roll star, the Gary Halton champion and one of the greatest front men the world has ever seen. Um, he basically absorbed what he needed to and went off and did the pistols. And I mentioned earlier that there's a similarity between the vocal stylings and the music musically of, say, Silverhead. The difference really is that Michael DeBars looked in the mirror one day in the 80s and suddenly thought these his excesses with drugs and alcohol was beginning to affect his looks. So he just decided to just stop. Gary Holton didn't do that. Um, he couldn't stop. And unfortunately, he succumbed to a heroin overdose in the 80s and he was gone. But... The heavy metal kids are still going in some form or other, but these three albums are a fantastic place to start. So if you're into British, kind of like raucous rock, um, you know, as I said, uh, they are good reference points. Silverhead, early Mot the Hoople, Brain Capers. There's a bit of Pistols in there. There's the Rock and Roll, Stones, Humble Pie, um, Humour. The song titles are just fantastic. Um, they, they really are. Jackie the Lad. 
and cops are coming. Um, it, it just really, really great stuff. Um, rock and roll man, as you'd expect. But really, really good. And Cherry Red have done a fantastic job again with the box set. Look, you know, a luxurious booklet. Um, and, you know, from, from Daigling and the SA. It's really, really good. So that is out now and it's highly recommended and it's from Cherry Red Records. So thank you for watching, thank you for being here, thank you for supporting me, subscribing, liking and commenting and sharing. Check out the podcast, check out the website, check out the Facebook group, just check out Naspin Magazine and I shall see you very, very soon.